Hi everyone, it's me, Dave, the Bent Knitter. Um, as you can see, I am with someone new. I am with Lee. Uh, you may have seen her a couple of times on my podcast before, but now we are going to try something new. Uh, we're going to try and get together weekly for a little exchange of crafting and talking. So, <laughs> say hi, Lee. Hi, Internet. So, I know... Uh, in an effort to get to know you a little bit better, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into knitting and crafting? Yeah, I grew up in San Francisco, and I didn't see snow until I was 18. I realized snow is cold, and they don't sell things in all the pretty colors that you want. So I thought I could knit and make these things, and I made some very horrible scarves and sweaters to start, and I slowly got better and stuck with it, and 10 years later... I can say that I've made real sweaters and real scarves, and uh, now I'm excited by even more crafts like embroidery and belt work. Yes, I realized growing up and seeing snow that it's very overrated, and it's also very cold. <laughs> came to that same realization very quickly. Yes, but that's always the beginning of all crafting is we all make the bad stuff first, then we all get better. Oh, it's a journey. Oh, yeah. So... I gave everyone a little bit of update of my baby blanket that I did, which I'm very happy with. For, speaking of pretty colors, you know, my baby blanket was all, oh. Oh. all pretty colors. I kind of like how it goes back and forth and the stripes aren't the same. I love that. How many skeins was that, David? I was just two, so it oh. wasn't that much. So I was actually surprised i'm i have come to the realization i'm bad at judging how much yarn i need so i <laughs> i i should be better at this point in my life but i'm not so i always tend to overbuy um which is not the worst thing say again better than underbuying yeah you know i think that's part of the reason why i still overbuy just because i i that hasn't gotten out of my system yet, but such is the knife of a, life of a knitter. <laughs> it is the life of a knitter. Yeah, I'm not great at yarn chicken, so. Oh, yarn chicken's the worst. I just knit faster. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've i won once or twice, and I've lost once or twice, so it's never a great thing when oh. once you lose. Uh, the, the beauty of that win. Yeah. So, speaking of crafts, um, what are you working on? <laughs> so, either one, two, or potentially three years ago, I got an uh, embroidered ornament kit from Pearl Soho. And these kits are so fun, and they're beautiful. And I've made three of my 21 ornaments. So, I made this one. Oh, that's pretty pretty. And I made this one. Little sparkles. And I made this one. Oh, that's cool. Now, is each one different or? Yes, each one is different. And they give you a pattern to kind of like show what the embroidery should look like. Okay. And then you just kind of freehand it all along. Okay. So I'm freehanding... Uh, off of what they show for technique. Okay, so it's... Sorry. Go ahead. It's more of a suggestion, not a dedicated pattern, per se. Yeah, they just show you how to do different embroidery technique techniques, and I am not super good at embroidery, so I'm getting used to learning how to bead and figuring out that each one of these things takes roughly three hours. Uh, yeah, you were telling me about that a little bit beforehand. <laughs> how long it takes. Did you expect it to take three hours each time? No. Each one, I imagined, was about 30 minutes. But based on uh, how I've gotten through all of Broadchurch today, and I only have <laughs> three ornaments done, it is much longer than I expected. But I do recommend Broadchurch to everyone. It is a great show. I, I agree. I watched it a little while ago. Um, I have to go rewatch it because they're actually coming out with a third season. Uh, that is what I just watched, and I recommend it highly. Oh, it came out. I haven't. I didn't realize it came out. I have to go watch it now. Yeah, it is all finally out, and it is great. Yes, 
I'm also very excited because another person from Raw Charge is the new doctor, so I'm excited. Who? I forgot her name and I'm horrible, but it's like one of the main characters. It's the first female doctor. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah. And oh, every, everyone's going to yell at me, but or people that watch Doctor Who are going to yell at me, but um, I will look it up and tell you later. So Yes. No, and all of your viewers know how how excited all of us should be for that. Yeah, because like Broadchurch actually has a couple people from Doctor Who, so. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, but yes, I'm gonna go watch Broadchurch, and look at this, and watch it and be excited. I recommend it so fully. Okay. Now. So you would recommend getting these kits for someone that wants to make their own handmade ornaments? I would recommend the kits. I would just kind of know what you're getting into. Okay. Do you think someone who's more used to embroidery will do it faster? Yes. I think if you have actual embroidery skills and are not a perfectionist, you could get this kit done in a day. Okay. That's interesting. See, but I'm I think if you have no skills and are a perfectionist, it will take you forever. Okay. Like me. I'm... Like, I'm tempted to get this because I kind of want to try it out myself. And because I've never done embroidery either, so I want to kind of see how I do at it. Oh, it's a beautiful art. Yeah. And then I think it will be the right level of embroidery for me. Like, I'm not going to be the kind of person that wants to do, like, a high-intensive embroidery thing, so. Yeah, because each one is little, so it's very satisfying and it makes you feel like you've made some progress. Okay. Now, another question is, does it come with the stuffing or do you have to go get stuff? It's a full It comes with literally everything you need. All you need to have are scissors. I think I have those. Yeah, but make sure that you have, like, pretty intense scissors. So I use these ones. Okay. Because it's very hard to cut felt. Oh, yeah. Didn't realize felt. Yes. As we all know, felt is not the easiest thing or the skinniest thing to cut it. That's not the right word, but that's okay. I know what you're saying. It also doesn't come with a thimble, and I've poked my finger so many times, so I would kind of recommend that one use that. Yes. So. And don't worry, I have a thimble, I'm just lazy. <laughs> I feel like I'll be the same way. I'll just be lazy, I'll never get a thimble, and I'll just, like, suffer the consequences of it. I'm just playing with fire. Yeah. I'm sure your hands will get used to it after. Once you're almost done, that's when your hands will get used to it, so. I'm finishing my final one. My hands will be ready. Yes, exactly. And by the time you embroidery, do more embroidery for the next time, your hands will not be ready for it again. Yes. Because I made the felted winter wreath, and I yeah. thought that was really beautiful, but that project took me a year on and off of avoiding it. Right. Like, I, I've seen the wreath. Very pretty, very lovely. I don't know if I want to do that. Yeah, yeah. But it taught me a lot of skills to be good at this one. Yeah. I feel like and I that. hope people Soho, I like did their hashtag on Insta, so uh, maybe they feature my work as I'm doing it. Because yes. it is for love. That's why I'm starting in August to be done by Christmas. See, with crafting, you have, you know, time management skills that you learn, so that way... You can't start a... Go ahead. You very much learn that you need to start in August for a project that you want for Christmas. Absolutely. You can't start in October. You have to start in August. At the latest. <laughs> At the latest is right. Yes. So, I think my next project is going to... Well, next yarn project, I should say, because I still might um, get that ornaments is actually... Something a little bit thicker. My worsted weight yarn, so. I'm looking forward to it. I think I'm going to do a cowl or something on it. Ooh, there we go. Oh, that's very pretty. Yeah. It's a nice green, but it's also much thicker than this last yarn, so it'll be nice to not have to deal with skinny yarn again. Yeah, skinny yarn is no one's friend. Yeah. And it's skin like... I seem to be very much in the middle of, like, I don't like skinny yarn too, too much, and I don't like bulky yarn too, too much. I'll do it, but 
it's just not a huge thing not a huge fan yeah no i'm i'm basically at the point where i want to use up my skinny yarn by doubling it or tripling it up so that it's no longer there yeah that's a good way of using it up quicker is just combining it and it could yeah. then also the cool thing is that it can have some nice effects of like coloring and combining so yeah you can get some very cool color blending so that's what i'm willing to do in order to get it out of my stash yeah that's always the worry of having a stash so yeah i'm trying to justify having purchased these kits by going through them one at a time so each time you see me i will be going through a yarn kit or an embroidery kit or a beading kit that i have purchased and need to justify not decluttering by using yeah i think that's one of the things that we're gonna try and do together is we're gonna each do a kit together and yep. seeing how uh, each one, our finished product, project, and our review of the kind of kit. So that way, do we like it? Would we recommend it? And would we suggest it to other people? Yeah, plus ideas for like, you know how you buy those kits of like multiple mini skeins of things? Like, yeah. I am going to try and work through those so I can give you all pattern recommendations for what to do with the kit that you bought because you were excited at Rhinebeck and have no idea what to do with it in your real life. We all there. Yeah, I mean, that's the only trouble with going to someplace like that is, like, you get very excited and then you just start buying. Yep. So. I am going to try to not do that this year, but we will never know. I believe in you. I believe in you. Makes one of us, man. <laughs> ah, I believe in you, Lee. Do you have a craft goal this week? I don't think I have a craft goal. Well, I think my craft goal is to find a pattern for my yarn. Because, like, I definitely want to do a scarf but or a cowl or something, like, nice and heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't want to use something I already have done. So I want to do something different. So I think that's going to be my major goal is just to find a pattern for this. And that way I should have it started by the next time we talk and have a good chunk done. But that is my goal. My craft goal is to have, uh, this will be my fourth ornament, to have eight ornaments done by Sunday of next week. Okay. I feel like that's a good goal. I think it's doable. I... I I think that's a very doable thing. I I am I am optimistic because if I can get this done before October, that would be great. Yes. Now, my one last question before we kind of wrap up is: Now, are these all for you, or are you going to be giving them away to friends and family? Oh no, no! This is for my apartment. I okay. have worked hard. There's a friends and family stash of very. <laughs> That's good that you're doing something for yourself. I have wanted these ornaments for a very long time. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like, there's as much as we have, sometimes you just got to do something for yourself. Yeah. This is the for me project. My next one will not be for me because it will be Christmas season, but. Of course. We're going to. This is where I'm selfish. That's fine. Excellent. So I think that's going to wrap up our first little get together podcast. Uh, yeah. It was a lot of fun and we will talk to you soon. Bye guys. Bye.